And welcome back to Across the Board with E and the Colonel here on AcrossTheBoardRadio.com and HawkRadio.org. You can find us through either website. We love uh, bands across the world. You know, we've interviewed bands, the biggest bands, the smallest bands from across the world. But because we're based in Maryland, Colonel, we also like to support our hometown bands. We, so we, bands we do have a little state. hometown bias, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we've had friends of the show. We've got, you know, Kelly Bell, Laughing Colors. Dobler was on. Dobler, time. All Time Low. You know, all, all, of, all Maryland bands. All Maryland bands, yeah. Born and bred. Uh, working on trying to get Clutch someday, too. But yeah. one of uh, my favorite bands, you know, and we like you know, we like bands like Pepper and that kind of stuff, too. That right. kind of reggae, kind of stoner rock, so, funk sound. Something you can just chill out, too. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite uh, Maryland bands of that genre has got to be Lion Eyes. And we have Chris, the keyboardist from Lion Eyes. Chris, welcome to the show. How you doing, man? I'm good. How you doing? Outstanding. Good. We're doing well. Well, the colonel's a little under the weather with his allergies, but otherwise we're doing okay. I'm hanging otherwise. I know the, I know the feeling. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Lion Eyes, local band for us, at least out of Maryland. You guys are from, based out of Silver Spring, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Silver okay. Spring. I'm nice. home right now in Colesville. Nice. That'll call, man, there's mm -hmm. so much traffic off that exit, Colesville Road. Oh, my God. Ridiculous. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, I know. You go down by like the, the Silver Theater down there and Discovery Channel. It's ridiculous. But anyway, so uh, you guys are from Montgomery yeah, you, County. You can drink you can drink beer in the uh, in the Silver Theater, right? Yes, yeah. you can. Yes, you can. That <laughs> is the uh, best. Yeah, that's the best movie that I have done. That I love that place. Um, yeah. So, like we said, you know, you guys, you know, for for you know, fans of our show who maybe haven't heard of Lion Eyes yet, get out there, hear about these guys. But that's kind of like we said, funk kind of reggae, kind of stoner rock, a little bit of everything that you guys put into it. And uh, the new yeah. album, the most recent album, I should say, is Destruction Manual, came out earlier this year. Tell us a little bit about touring on Vans Warp Tour this year. Like we said, we were out there. We saw you guys play. Um, what was it like yeah, to be on the Warp Tour? Which, which one did you guys come to? Uh, Virginia Mary Beach. Letter? Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that was actually a pretty great show. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, it was. I, Warp Tour is, Warp Tour is nuts. We're, we're like much more born and bred as a, as a club band. You know, we're used to playing shows at night. Right. At the same time, every day on tour. That sort of deal, Warp Tour was like, we were waking up at 7 in the morning, mm. looking our gear like God knows how far to the stage. <laughs> I'll be from a bus, from a bus, which was awesome, and that was the first time we've ever had that. Wow. We were extremely lucky. Uh, we shared a bus with the Agrolites all summer. And they nice. Were super cool. I don't know if you know those guys. Mm -hmm. I checked them out before. Yeah, they're great. They're, uh, yeah, super cool band from L.A. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it, it was just wild. Like everything was was different every single day. You know, you you wake up in a totally different place. And you gotta you find a place to use the bathroom, and find where you're gonna eat, and find where the stage is that day, and figure out what time you're gonna play. And you know, that could be anywhere between noon and eight p.m. You know. Yeah. And then you kind of figure out your schedule from there. But I mean, like, you know, other than it being sort of a culture shock, it, it was it was awesome, and we met all kinds of cool people, and we got all kinds of fans that we would have never gotten normally, uh, you know, at a regular club show or at one of our own shows, you know, just because the mix at that, on that tour is so across the board, you know, it's fans that we would, you know, probably never get to tour with otherwise, right. you know, that are out there and their fans are out there to see them and they might get to, you know, just wander by the stage and catch 15 minutes of us or 10 minutes of us, or, you know, and that's really what it's worth is all those, those new fans that, that we're not going to get, you know, we're not going to do. 30 days with the day to remember anytime soon probably you know <laughs> right <laughs> but uh but we did on the warp tour so to speak so so would know. you would you rather play on the warp tour with all these bands that you haven't played with before but only have a 30 to 40 minute set or would you rather play you know something else where you're going to have you know one two hours if you wanted it um well i mean of course i'd like to play as long as i can every day right you know I mean, if we were in a position where we could go out and headline tours and and uh, play for one to two hours a night and and you know draw tons of people all over the place, I would I would love to do that. But you know, in terms of, of going out there and getting fans and, and working as a band, you know, uh, it's pretty hard to deny the the value of the warp tour in that sense. Right. Yeah. You know? But at the same time, you know, we work our asses off all day every day for a thirty minute set. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, which, is, which is a bummer. But that's pretty normal, even still, on a club tour. You know, we're going to go out and open for um, Streetlight Manifesto in December, and we'll probably only do a 30, 40-minute set on that tour as well. Right. You know. So, Talk about, uh, yeah, you said you were sharing a bus with the AgroLite. So, like you said, it's the first time you actually had a bus as a band. You guys have normally traveled yeah. in a van, you know, with, with six of you or so in a van. What was exactly. the best thing about having a bus, and what is it like 
like how do you work it out sharing it with another band? You guys are a big band, like number wise. So are the Agrolites. How do you, how many beds are there in one bus? Well, there there were twelve, and we were full. Wow, we were totally full. Yeah, we had tour manager, two merch guys, and uh, four in our band and five in theirs. Wow. So, yeah, we were we were a full house. It was pretty wild. I, I what what happened was our what, when we were looking for vehicle options to go out on the tour because we knew we didn't want to do it in our van because first of all we didn't think it was going to make it because <laughs> <laughs> it's such, it's such a grueling tour and and second of all it's just it, it it's grueling enough that you really need to be in a, a little to do that we did the entire thing and there's only really a few bands that went out there and did the entire tour in a van mm-hmm. and to those bands i i bow my head and commend with all my respect because i'm, I'm not sure if we could have gotten through that uh but but uh, you know, the best part about being on the bus is just you get to pass out at the end of the show and wake up at the next show, and there's no work in between, you know. Yeah, you have somebody else we're to drive. To, yeah, I mean, we're used to figuring out where we're going to stay, where we're going to eat, who's going to drive, who's going to drink, you, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, no, none of that stuff is, is really a worry anymore, not to mention the fact that we have our own dressing room anywhere we go. Wow. All the time, you know. A lot of clubs, you know, we'll go through a lot of days on club tours in the van where we'll have no dressing room for several days in a row and we'll be stuck in the parking lot and then you just go from the parking lot to the Motel 6 to the next venue to the parking lot and it kind of, you know, gets a little, kind of becomes a little bit tiring, you know. On the, with the bus, you can, you know, if I've got two hours of downtime in the middle of the day, I'll go take a nap in my bunk. Yeah, in your, you know? your own vicinity. That's nice, man. Now, I, I know Destruction Manual, you guys actually got to work with producer Jay Robbins. Now, Jay Robbins worked with Jawbox, um, or of Jaw, Jawbox, but he also, I think, yeah. you know, biggest albums that he's probably done, at least for Maryland bands, Clutches, uh, Robot Hive slash Exodus, and he did Strange Cousins from the West. Love Clutch, yeah. and, and love what he did on, on your album as well. I've listened to your album, you know, front to back. It's I love every song the whole way through. What was it like working with Jay, and, and will that come collaboration happen again in the future uh, uh jay's jay's absolutely incredible e- easily the, the, the best producer for us to work with uh in, in the sense that he's just very he's 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 not extremely directive with his uh with his feedback in terms of what we're playing uh it's a lot more like how we're playing it and just getting tons and tons of takes until we all feel like we found the right pieces to put together mm-hmm if that, if that makes any sense, it's it does. Not a lot of like, you know, why don't you play this year and you play this year? It's kind of like let's play that again and you know maybe try something different or you know not even so much. I think we did a little bit more work arranging on that destruction manual. That I, to answer your next question, uh, that collaboration has already happened again. Okay, uh, we've already we've already finished the new record. Uh, Great, it's going to be out in December, and we did it also with Jay Robbins. And that's called and, what? Uh, I'm sorry? What's the name of the new album? The name of the new album is uh, Super Czar and the Vulture. Super Czar and the Vulture. Got it. Okay. Yeah. It might be the first media outlet we've told that to. Nice. <laughs> Appreciate the scoop. Actually. Exclusive. Yeah. yeah. Hey, no problem. I know we, we <laughs> threw something up on our Facebook recently. Okay. So I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to say that. Nice. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we did. We already finished the new album with Jay, and, and we're just we're even happier with, with this one than we are with the last one. We, we wrote this one really quickly uh, over the course of like three months, just right between tours. And then we just went in there and recorded it. And we did a lot of stuff where we uh, where we kind of fused songs together and made big, long suites out of them and stuff. So it's, uh, it's a little bit different than, than the last one, but I think it kind of moves in the same direction, you know? So what made the song... Yeah, those, those Clutch albums are, are absolutely some of my favorite records ever made. And that's... Hell yeah. Bones about it, exactly why we chose to work with Jay Robbins, because we love those Clutch records so much. So do you think other bands then... Actually, now that i got a follow-up question. Do you think other bands that's part of the problem with them sometimes is they might have a good producer, but it's not the producer fit for them, for their style? Yeah, that it's not the producer that, that fits them? Sure, absolutely. I mean, I think bands go through that all the time. Right. I think every band's got one or two albums that, you know... It didn't quite work the way they wanted them to because the you know the production collaboration wasn't what what suits them. You know, some bands need a lot more direction, some bands need a lot less direction, some bands need absolutely no direction. You mm-hmm. know, and you need the right guy who's who's going to see where you're at musically and see where you, where you're trying to go and get you there, rather than you know a lot of guys have a vision of their own, but it might not be your vision, right? You know, or your band's vision. And I and I do think the people that they create the music probably have the best 
instinct about where they want to go with it, <laughs> you know. So what do you think made the songwriting process different on this latest album compared to the other albums? Um, I don't know if the actual process was so different. We, our process is weird. We kind of do a lot of different things. A lot of times it'll just be a jam, you know, that, that becomes a, a, a part that we'll start throwing words on and then and then kind of like go from there. You know, a lot of times it'll be something where somebody comes in with, with some words and we start formulating music around the words. So a lot, it's, it's always different and it's always kind of... I think really the only difference between this record and the last record is that we wrote this one quickly. Okay. You know, it was, it was kind of like we wrote maybe one or two songs before we left for the the tour early this year, the January we played January through March basically, and came home for two months before the work tour, two or three months before the work tour. We pretty much wrote everything in those months before the work tour and recorded them. You know, so I think that what's unique about it is that everything is is really fresh and all happening at the same time, and then we put it all on record right then. So I think that the overall uh, idea of the album is a lot more cohesive just because it was all kind of from one session, so to speak. Across the board with Ian the Colonel here with uh, Chris from Lion Eyes. Again, we're talking about the uh, album that's out right now. has been out since the beginning of the year, Destruction Manual, and the new album that's coming out this December. Called, what was it? Super Czar and the Vulture? Is that right? Super Czar and, and the, the Vulture, Vulture yes. Yeah. I like it. I dig that. What, what's what's the meaning behind that? Um, well, Just uh, sounded sweet. Of, we, we always write... Uh, the lyrics are always kind of... Uh, not dark, so to speak, but, you know, we... we we talk a lot about uh, the wealthy and and uh, and uh, and you know vulture super czar and vulture are kind of both just like imagery for takers you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. for for people that are out to out for their own gain at others' expense. Got so, it. And we write a lot about that kind of stuff, but in a very uh, uh, esoteric and. and <laughs> sort of hidden way. Okay, I got it. I like yeah. it. Uh, who? Else, I mean, you're you're the keyboardist in the band. Who do you yeah. admire as far as keys? You know, who? I guess who inspired you, and and who do you like that's out there right now? Uh, you know, on the keys. Um, um I mean, all, most most of my inspiration is is like like old jazz and old jazz piano players and and like funk organ players and stuff. So I'm a huge I'm a huge like Bill Evans, McCoy Tyner, okay. uh, Red Garland fan. That whole era of jazz is sort of where I where I started really paying attention to music and, and like digging in and learning that material. Okay. You know, also I'm, I'm a huge you know Booker T and the MGs and and the Meters and and all that stuff. I love Bernie Worrell. Nice. And all those great like funk organ players from the '70s and stuff. Um, you know, I'm not I'm, I'm still not up on modern music. I haven't really checked out a lot of modern guys. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a couple keyboard players that we've toured with that are really great. The guy from the Agrilites, Roger, he's a really great player. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, there's the, did you? I don't know if you got to catch Lucero when you were out there. On we the did not. Tour. No. Did you not? No. They're uh, they have an unbelievable keyboard player, this fellow Rick. I, I'm not sure what his last name is, but he really, really, he was the only guy out there playing real piano style stuff, which was cool because that's where I'm from. I'm I'm a piano player before I'm an organ player. Okay. And that guy was, yeah, if you ever get a chance to listen to Lucero, they've got a really rad keyboard player. He's been around forever. And I think he played with, like, uh, uh, Hank Williams Jr. in the 80s and stuff. You wow. Know? Yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, you know, Warp Tour is actually as hectic, if not more hectic, for the fan than it is for the bands. I know it's crazy for you guys, but for us, oh, you yeah. know, I don't know how many bands there were total, something like 45, uh, something like that, maybe. 6,000, I believe. Yeah, and there were, what, eight, nine <laughs> stages <laughs> spread across this, like, concert venue, this festival ground almost. Right. So for us right. trying to do interviews backstage, go shoot photos at stages, see other bands that we wanted to see, it was just, you know, eight to whatever, however many hours was it, eight to nine hours of just insanity. So yeah, it's, and the fact that it was about 106 oh, degrees sure. out there. Yeah, that was yeah, a I mean, that was there, a rough there show. Fans I didn't see the entire time they were out on the tour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not because I didn't want to, just because I never got there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Uh, Chris, uh, you know, if you knew the world was going to end in ten minutes, five, ten minutes, maybe fifteen, we'll give you that. Okay, okay. what is Fair the enough. last song you would want to hear? Or perform yours or anybody else's the last notes that you want in your head. Interesting. Why, the thank last you. song I'd want to hear it would probably be 
It would definitely be something I'd want to hear and not something I want to play. Okay. <laughs> Maybe like something by the Beatles. Ah, huh, that's a good call. Older or you know, new? just something extremely beautiful. I was going to yeah. say, are you looking for the older, more chippy Beatles or the uh, the experimental Beatles toward the end of the career? Oh, uh, you know, I love it. I can't, I can't choose any part of the Beatles that I like more than the others. Okay, fair I'm enough. A, I'm a Beatles fan across the board. I'm a songwriting fan, and I think from beginning to end, that's like the best group of songwriters that ever was and probably will ever be, you know? I, I wrote a song about a walrus. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, so. <laughs> I think that song's about being a Beatle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, Chris, uh, you know, we appreciate the time. Again, we are Lion Eyes fans for sure, not just because you guys are from Maryland uh, like we are, but, you know, that you're a great, great band. You just happen to be from our area. So, you know, we Thanks appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, wherever you guys are listening around the world right now, again, Destruction Manual is out right now. It came out this February. And Super Czar and the Vulture. Coming out this December. Yeah. Exclusive. That's the name of it. It's coming out this December. Yeah, look for that everywhere. And you guys are on Facebook. You guys are everywhere. Um, so go out and find Lion Eyes. But more importantly, as we always say, go see them live. You have to experience music like these guys. Uh, you know, support them. Buy some merch. Go up and meet them. And uh, you know, definitely keep these guys on the road. So we appreciate it, Chris. And uh, we'll be back in a few minutes here on Across the Board with Ian the Colonel on AcrossTheBoardRadio.com and HawkRadio.org.